guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability test and validation topics. This current video is an introduction to system and product test plans. A great test plan leads to a great system or product. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. In this video, we will cover definitions, types of test plans, test plan prerequisites, and how to create a test plan, the basics on test plan development. So what is a test plan? A test plan is your game plan for how you will proceed with and execute your verification, validation, and reliability test stages for your system or product. A test plan outlines your test sequences, required resources and schedule, and all the processes related to accomplishing your validation and testing endeavor. The test plan answers the when, where, who, and how questions for testing your system or product. A well-written test plan will work as a checklist for preparation and execution of testing and is an extremely valuable tool that many companies don't understand or do not utilize as an incredibly powerful engineering and project engineering tool. Think about it. Would you walk across the street blind? I don't think so. Well, if you don't have a good test plan in place, you will get hit by a bus. When the schedule crunch happens and in the fog of war or in the fog of testing, issues happen, failures occur, and program management, engineering, and tests get into a finger pointing battle. So keep yourself covered and have a well-defined plan that is approved by all the stakeholders. Let's cover types of test plans now. You have the component test plan, which is the plan for individual components that are integrated to make subsystems. You have the subsystem test plan, which are the integrated parts that are assembled together to create your system or product. Then you have your system test plan, which is when you take everything and fully integrate it and then test it, which is a representation of what you would sell to a customer. You also have the master test plan. It is an effective consolidated plan that captures your component, subsystem, and system level testing in one document. However, depending on the complexity of your system, this document can be quite massive. So in some instances, it may be better to break it up into separate test plans so that you don't end up with hundreds or even thousands of pages for your test plan that will, nobody will ever read or follow. At the component and subsystem level, the test plans can be broken down into two types, software test plans and mechanical and hardware test plans. On the software side, test plans are typically validation or software test plans. I don't like to use the words reliability and software in the same sentence. And here's why. Software failures are simply issues that were not identified during verification and validation testing. Software failures do not occur as a result of long-term usage and it is just a matter of a customer finding a quarter case that was not caught in verification and validation testing. Software failures are quality related and are not the result of usage over time as with physical hardware and mechanical systems. For mechanical and hardware systems, test plans typically include verification, validation, and reliability testing. With hardware, you will verify that the mechanical and hardware subsystems operate as intended per technical specifications and are validated to the requirements of the customer and tested for lifetime performance and verification of warranty predictions and targets. There are a few things that need to be done before you jump into your test plan development. You need the customer requirements, which is what the customer expects from the system or product. You need the system requirements, which are derived by systems and design engineering from the customer requirements. And you also need to decompose the system requirements for how the subsystem and components should perform to meet system level requirements. Let's cover the basics on how to create a test plan template now. You want to start with an introduction. Let the reader and yourself understand the intent of the test plan with a well-written purpose and scope. You want to list the system specifications such as the electrical parameters, the temperature, and electrical protection limits, dimensions, and weight. You want to list out features and functionality of the system that will be tested and will not be tested. You also want to create the test sequencing for how your test will be performed. Refer to my video on test sequencing for more details. Next, you will want to provide the process for handling of failures where issues are documented, the root cause analysis process, or provide the reference document number for the test failure handling procedure. Next up, 
is the test project management. This will list who is managing the testing in the test plan, the responsible test owners for the each test, the test locations, whether in your facility or at a third party testing facility, resources including test equipment and support equipment, and last but not least, the test schedule for the timeline the test plan will be executed against. You will also need to list all referenced or related documentation, such as test standards, system specifications, documents, requirement documents, and so forth. And that's it folks. Some key takeaways from this video are, a great test plan acts as a checklist for testing and validation programs. You should leverage the test plan as a means to make sure you haven't forgotten to complete anything in the planning step before test execution. Which leads us to the next point. Use the test plan as a tool and do not think of the test plan development as an inconvenience that your boss is making you perform. Be careful with creating a catch-all or master test plan. It might be tempting to throw all testing for every part of the system into one test plan, but if it grows into a massive document, nobody's going to read nor follow it. Follow the how to create a test plan step to get the core content, including that you, what you need for a successful test plan development process. This video provided a quick start on developing test plans. If you need additional help tailoring a test plan for your particular system or product, feel free to reach out to me at one of the links in the description. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.